will be good. All set. <laughs> so I want to welcome everybody to this edition of the Cemetery Chair. Uh, Bob Welch, uh, designee for Mission Bank of the Mount Center. And Chris Wiles, designee for the Mission Bank of the Mount Center. And before those who will be introduction, um, I wanted to make an announcement. And I'm compelled to make an announcement. Bob, uh, after five or six years of service, five plus will be departing and moving on. And uh, I'm personally very sad. I've indicated to Bob that we are going to have a golden shovel prepared and he must visit us again. And I leave that for his trial director uh, to enforce as, uh, as an order of the board. All right, so that will happen. Now, Bob has brought uh, somebody who uh, will be, I would say, filling his shoes, but will be our new board member. And why don't you introduce him? Bob, and then you can say a few words. Happy uh, to introduce Paul Ambrose. So now there's two Ambroses in the, uh, in the <laughs> room at <laughs> future meetings. Uh, Paul is our center director for uh, policy development. And uh, he's, uh, oh, this is nice. he's a great thinker, have one great decision like maker, <laughs> and I know we'll do the job very well. Thank you. Paul, I don't know if you want to. I'm the director of the planning and strategic Planning and Performance Management Quality Improvement Group in the Office of Primary Care and Health Systems Management, DOH. Glad to be joining. We're delighted to have you. Thank you. And, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll have lots of fun on the board dealing with issues you never, ever hear. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't like <laughs> you. Despite my best efforts, you still said yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, welcome again, and now let's go on the table. Hi, uh, Louis Polishuk, uh, Director of the uh, Division of Cemeteries. Uh, Chester Butkowitz, Assistant Director of the Division of Cemeteries. <coughs> Mike Seelman, Senior Investigator, Division of Cemeteries. Len Breen, Investigator, Division of Cemeteries. Suzanne Dressel, Clerk, Division of Cemeteries. <coughs> Joe Ambrose, Associate Accountant, Division of Cemeteries. Tony Melillo, Counsel to the Cemetery Board. Great. And I, I note the presence of many, many folks in the audience. Welcome. If you haven't ever been to the Cemetery Board meeting before, hold on to your seats. Uh, in celebration, we, we, uh, Lewis has kindly uh, provided some munchkin donuts. Uh, it looks like there's just one to a person, so. <laughs> well, well so, so we have not, We actually have another uh, personnel move to announce uh, Suzanne who is our official minutes, unofficial minutes taker, I suppose she can't be official because she's not on the board, uh, is, has accepted a position, uh, another position within this agency, but not within the Division of Cemeteries. And so while we'll still be hitting our, up for a few things in her new capacity at the, in our fiscal uh, division, uh, she's not going to be working for us anymore. So... <coughs> The uh, your, your, uh, <laughs> the, the uh, scheduling snafus like you not knowing which room we are going to be in today are yep. going to become infinitely more common for the next few months. Um, <clears throat> now, it, I would have gotten a larger box of donuts, but in deference to our representatives from the Department of Health, I thought we really ought to minimize the number of donuts to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to reduce the public health impact of this. You've been phenomenal. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming it's a promo, but we don't have to get into that here. Uh, but uh, thank you very much. She'll be sorely missed. I she know she will. Raise the level but of the bar. She's in the department. You know what you that know. means. We're going to be bothering you her. never really lose where you were, so I'm sure we will be hitting you up for, uh, for help. But, uh, and we wish you all the best. But thank you. You too. I'm going to start the donuts to make sure some people actually take Very them. good. <laughs> Okay, while you're doing that, let's take a look. We do have to do some board meeting work today, so let's get to it. Okay, one, there you go. Um, have folks had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Any comments, changes, I have suggestions? <laughs> Neither do I, so congratulations. All right. Uh, so where you go out. Uh, <laughs> up. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. All right, legislation and regulation. Mr. Manila, where are we? We are moving ahead with the... Um, oh, by the way, Pat, Susie. Pat, Susie. 
these guys, these two guys need oh. to have a chance, and then we'll share them with our guests. Um, we're moving ahead with the proposed uh, revision of the financial regs. Um, we've met with um, interested parties. Uh, they had numerous comments to our latest drafts. Um, we have a we're scheduling a phone conference soon to go over some of the the, the last issue. Really, is um, how to account for uh, pre need sales when when um, PM fund deposits should be made in relation to those uh, pre need sales. Um, I think once we resolve that issue, it'll be ready for the board. All right, and do we think we're going to get a resolution to that that all parties can agree to? I don't know. I don't know if it'll be a consensus or not because there really is a sticking point between divisions' needs to be able to um, <coughs> see clearly what's being done and that the PM funds are going in and and the the existing business practices of a couple of the cemeteries. So. All right. Well, look, let, let's continue to, to work on that. Uh, we can't come to resolution. We can't. And, and, and we'll take a look at the, at Great. the uh, draft. I so did want to apprise the board of one other thing. Um, the um, Oakwood Cemetery Mount Kisco, mm -hmm. that was the uh, situation where uh, the town and village amended their uh, their zoning law to define a cemetery to exclude crematories to prevent Mount uh, Oakwood from building a crematory that it had planned and proposed and that we had approved. Um, they took that Supreme Court loss. They took it to the appellate division. And I've just learned that there was a decision, even though it's dated um, March, that they lost at the appellate division as well. Uh, although, you know, the good thing is the appellate division did address the crux of our argument, um, which is spelled out in the board's letter to the uh, town officials that um, because we define cemeteries as including crematories, what they're doing is in conflict with state law, uh, in conflict with the scheme. Um, unfortunately, the appellate division, even though it addressed the, that issue finally, it didn't address it in our favor. Um, um, so it's disappointing, and I, I haven't talked to the cemetery to see where, uh, whether they're going to take it to the next level, which would be the Court of Appeals. All right. We'll have to discuss what our course of action is if it goes to the Court of Appeals. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's all. All right. Thank you. Yep. So a couple of issues have uh, arisen recently. And when I say recently, I mean since the agenda was prepared. So I want to put these out there on the division's report. One of them is we are seeing an increasing number of columbarium installations where no prior application is made to us or to the board. Um, I don't think people realize that installing a small – look, there may be some cemeteries that do not realize that major – renovations require coming to the board. There may be a larger number of cemeteries that do realize that major renovations or construction of a mausoleum require coming to the board but think that a small columbarium doesn't fall into either category. Those cemeteries would be wrong in thinking that, but that doesn't mean that it isn't happening. And we're going <clears> to, <throat> with our annual report mailing, we're going to get out guidance to the world that, in fact, if you're planning on installing a columbarium, it may well very be a good idea, and we're happy to help you out with your application, but you do need to come to us first before you spend a lot of money on them. Um, that was number one issue. Number two issue, and I don't know the facts yet. I just want to flag the issue because it seems to be something that will occur. We received a complaint slash inquiry concerning cremation of, uh, of fetal remains, and uh, I know we had an issue with that where uh, there was – I'm allowed to say illegal conduct, right? At, a board order was issued. It was public, so. Uh, uh, with one of our crematories where they were uh, uh, taking fetal remains without a proper uh, fetal death certificate or other permitting and cremating them en masse, which is uh. several violations right there again. <laughs> Um, I don't know the facts of this case, but it's something that probably is going to be a subject of some inquiry. And once we figure out exactly what the facts are, it probably is worth it for the division to put out a little bit of guidance on this subject as well. Um, 
the regional conferences uh, are, seem to go really well. The one we had in um, in Oneonta was not only incredibly well attended, but I think people had a lot of really good questions. I hope we had some decent answers. And um, we need to do more of these. So let's figure out how we can do more of these. Not necessarily just with NISAC, but we need to, I think, we, I think we are this year getting the word out more than we have in the past, and I think we need to do even more of that because something always comes up that you didn't know was an issue when you're out in the in the, in the real world like that. Um, on uh, on uh, the press's favorite virus, um, Ebola, the CDC has recently revised as recently as of Friday, but I didn't find out about it until last night, has revised its guidelines concerning uh, um, the safe handling of remains of victims of, of Ebola. Uh, I've read them, and uh, we, in addition to those guidelines, we, we have a link. I have to double check that the link still works. We have put a link to that on our website, but I want to double check that that link now goes to the new thing. I assume it does, but I, wanted to, I hadn't have a chance to check that yet. Uh, but that's there, a link to the Department of Health that has a whole bunch of resources out there about Ebola. So we have a link that redirects to the Department of Health's websites, get the facts about Ebola section. We're also continuing within the division and with the, the Department of Health discussing what additional safety precautions might be appropriate uh, in terms of handling of remains. Well, so I just want to add, since we spoke, mm -hmm. um, CDC did issue, uh, they called it revised guidance Friday night. Uh, in substance, it's not a whole lot different from the first issuance. That, that was not the revised uh, guidance that we were expecting. Uh, they do have a work group down there that is, that is working on the handling of human remains. And the guidance that we are still expecting, which we still believe is going to be out next week, is going to be forthcoming from CDC because what went out Friday night and as, as Lewis said, you know, went out on the cloak of darkness uh, is not much different than what was uh, uh, initially uh, released. So, um, you know, we're expecting that next week and, and go ahead, Lewis, if you to talk about I mean, The uh, one piece, I, I'm not prepared to say what additional safety precautions in totality we are going to adopt. One thing I will say, though, is that we are working on advanced planning, we've, I think it's fair to say, you can start throwing things at me if I'm wrong, identified uh, crematories in New York City that are capable of handling the disposition of, uh, of the uh, final disposition of the remains of an Ebola victim. We're working on doing the same thing in the areas that are near our, the, the state's um, <clears throat> other uh, Ebola-designated hospitals so that, I, I mean, Thank God, we've, when people have been treated promptly in the United States, we actually have a 100, it's, it's not a statistically meaningful sample, but we have a 100% survival rate where people are treated early here in the United States. So hopefully all of this planning <coughs> will be academic. But uh, we think it's important to have as much of this done in advance as possible. And one of the key steps, which we're well on the way to doing, is identifying the crematories that can with as much ease as is possible under the circumstances, handle this. Um, I think that was everything okay. I wanted to Pick say up. about that Pick subject. Up. Mike has one thing to add on the division report, which I think is a really cool development. And uh, go ahead. The uh, town of Parish in Sweden <coughs> County uh, was approached by the, the one active cemetery, uh, Pleasant Lawn Cemetery, in the town and asked if they could uh, Put a uh, not a referendum, but what's the word I'm looking for? It uh, wasn't a referendum. It wasn't. I, a, I guess it was a voters? referendum. They have the, the uh, uh, town vote on whether or not they could have a cemetery tax, <coughs> and they did. And, they, and I've got a draft of the uh, local law. Uh, so they asked for ten cents per thousand, and they had 600 people vote, and, it, and that won by about 100 votes. So they intend or they think that they're going to ra uh, raise about $16,000 a year in this cemetery tax, and then it's going to go right to the cemetery from the town. 
This is assessed value. Assessed value. Yeah. Wow. This is a part of the, uh, our cemetery. This is our cemetery. It's an active cemetery. cemetery. I got a copy of the local law if I can distribute that. Yeah, this, uh, this may now qualify as the most creative use of general municipal law section 165A. Well, thinking, uh, yeah, I, uh, <coughs> that is very interesting. Um, okay. I mean, our view on this is good for them for stepping up to the plate. Right. I. I I, without having read the local law, I will remain silent on the <coughs> issue. But it's great that the locality, you know, recognizes that it, it needs to step up to the plate and support the cemetery. It's in the interest of the inhabitants, and it's in the interest of the taxpayers as well, because we know what happens when cemeteries aren't supported. Agreed. So um, good for them. Thank you. All righty. Um, <coughs> Chad. Oh. Yes. Let's talk about families. Yes. Um, for the fiscal year, uh, currently, um, as of the end of uh, You'll October get a, 31st, when you 2014, speaking, you get a donut. <laughs> vandalism collected with $37,582. Uh, applications granted during the same period totaled $389,378. And applications pending uh, are $405,335. Uh, two of the pending applications are before the board today. Um, so that will come down should these applications be approved. Uh, of the funds granted to for vandalism, totaling $9,295. Seven applications <coughs> were for restoration, totaling $160,682. And two of the applications were for abandonment, totaling $219,401. Thank you. And Chad, is there any way to know which were paid? Pardon? Is there any way to know which were paid? Uh, yes, when? it's um, the numbers I report are actually granted. Granted, uh, you generate them. Yeah, but the, we the, have the, paid, don't yeah, we? the payment is actually. Uh, hold on. I think I brought that with me. Find your email. Hold on. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Yep. Um, of the $389,378 of applications granted, uh, dispersed with $306,337. So, and it's based upon the, I guess, uh, uh, percentage of completion, if you will, and verification that work of applications is actually being performed. And Since completed. we have a lot of people here, I figure I'll remind everyone that the policy of the division is now we will no longer, absent truly unusual circumstances, pay the entire grant up front. At most, you are going to get 50 percent up front. With that, that should be more than enough to get a contractor to do the work. In the real world, contractors often work for 25 or 33 percent up front. And at the end, after we've inspected and after we've started, concluded that everything was done according to the oil, um, you'll get the other 50 percent. This is really important because we had a, a case out in Mike's neck of the woods where uh, some seriously substandard work was done and we'd already dispersed the money. So we want to make sure that that does not happen. And the other thing I'll add is that we did some um, – one of the – we had two rather large <coughs> abandonment claims in the last calendar year. I think one was technically the previous fiscal year. Um, and I was – one of them was at Asbury Cemetery in Staten Island. Uh, we were there a couple weeks ago, and there's still some trees to be brought down, but it, it really looks terrific. It's gone from being a kind of a terrifying jungle to being someplace where you could imagine – in the not too distant future, new interments being made and someone actually wanting to buy in there has the interesting distinction of being the final resting place of the real Ichabod Crane, <laughs> who is not the character from the Washington Irving story. He was a colonel and a hero of the War of 1812. Washington Irving met him at a party and thought the name was cool and used it. Apparently, Colonel Crane was not amused. Um. <laughs> We have a short agenda today, so Lewis has felt the need to. to <laughs> <laughs> we never bring in good news. That I got to bring great, in some good that news. Was a great donut talk. 
thing. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Uh, why, don't we do, uh, yeah, why don't we do Green Ridge first, which is a dangerous uh, monument application. Um, anybody have any conversation or issues with that application? Uh, motion? Second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, then we have Town of Teresa, abandonment. Um, the, uh, really the only question I have, well, maybe three. The 1989 backhoe, and we recommend not approving that, I assume because the 89 is functional and fine. It's functioning and they're using it. Yeah. Um, they just, they want new equipment. Well, of course, but, all right. Uh, and then the lawnmower. Can we get parts for 89? Yeah. I might go up there and fix it himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what about that two thousand something dollar lawnmower? The two thousand eight. They've got they've got two very nice lawnmowers right now. Um, it, the the request for additional information was what you know what other what other uh, equipment the town has, and the town does have equipment. The cemetery that's at the Equipment that's at the cemetery now, mm -hmm. with regards to the lawn maintenance, is newer than the other equipment that the town has. Okay. Uh, the cemetery or the equipment that the cemetery is requesting now will stay at the cemetery. The equipment that they have stays at the cemetery. The other town equipment that is listed is uh, it's trailer two. You know. Okay. The other cemeteries that they maintain, the park, etc. So what was the total? I didn't take it down. I have 22,939, but what was the total without the lawnmower then? 22,939, or 20,399 uh, and 95 cents. And that removes the backhoe too? Yes. Yeah, the backhoe is significantly significant expense. All right. Uh, questions? Further discussion? The, 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 the only comments on yes. the question I had was the range in the estimates. Thirty-two thousand down to four thirty-nine hundred and sixteen thousand. Just, just a comment. I think, yeah, I think, I think those didn't include. You know, I, I, I sort of. Um, I think they're for separate things. All right. Yeah, this I'm is not, this is for the tree removal, which we grant. All right. All right. Which I eventually <laughs> grant. Um, this was for something else. This is for the backhoe. Right. Right? Is that right? Yeah, they only they didn't get multiple estimates. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the sixteen thousand is the trees. I think that we discussed, uh, and then the uh, it's the entrance to the vault ramp. Right. Is okay. the thirty nine, and then the thirty one thousand was for uh, everything that they that they had required. It's the a equipment. Gator utility vehicle. They actually have a utility vehicle. It's older, but it's they just wanted to upgrade it. Um, the backhoe was nineteen thousand dollars. They have a backhoe, um, blower, leaf blowers, and then the two mowers. That that totals the thirty thirty one eight ninety nine. So based on what Mike has told us, I'm, I'm thinking that we, we make the grant, of course, for the tree removal, for fixing up the walkway, the pathway, uh, and for uh, some of the equipment, but for the backhoe and lawnmower. That would total twenty thousand to twenty nine hundred five. <coughs> that sound good to folks? Yes. Yeah. I, I want you to make all the motions today. All right. Every <laughs> single one. So, <laughs> all right. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. All right. Uh, I could have that out of my tombstone. <laughs> so move. So move. So move. <laughs> That's good. Let's right. vote not. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, Marcella Cemetery, land purpose. Who's got this? Who's this one, Mike? That's mine. Uh, something that uh, basically uh, Marcella Cemetery's got it's roughly eight <coughs> acres. They've got about an acre and a half left to sell. Um, a good portion of that's on a hillside, and it's difficult to bury. They, uh, it's difficult to sell as well. They've for about ten years been trying to purchase uh, parts of the property that's uh, directly. Uh, to the rear of the cemetery, abuts it for a couple hundred feet. Um, something the report indicates that Chris pointed out to me is that the seller is actually a trustee. Uh, however, uh, she abstained from voting a, a resolution to, to purchase the property. 
uh, and the asking price is fifteen thousand dollars, where our appraisals are twenty, I think twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, it's a low, low market value. Also, the cemetery has adequate funds to uh, to purchase this. They have a big surplus in the PM. Or, yeah. Yeah, it look, looks like a, a great purchase for them. Uh, my only um, estimated five million in ultimate revenue, approximately five million. Uh, but the one thing I noticed was that lot sales have been declining over the course of years. In 2011, they did 11,000. 2012, 7, 2013. Yeah, they, I mean, it's going to be a long haul. Is it, you know, what's going on in that in that area? We figured that within 35 years, they're really going to be done with the the prime half acre that they have, uh -huh. and they could go ahead and work on that the, the acre remaining hillside. Um, if they don't get this property, though, they'll pretty much be done at that point because they will be completely landlocked. Um, <coughs> Because this, the cemetery is on a more or less a corner of a road, so two sides are road. One side is residence, and then this this vacant lot or acreage is behind them. So, um, okay. All right. Well, what we're saying is that I don't know about the need. You know, we're getting this discussion with a lot of cemeteries recently. That I'm not I'm not sure about the need in the sense that. You have the climbing lot sales. Like right. this. Does that mean there won't be a need <laughs> 35 years hence? Uh, but none of us have crystal balls. I don't know the answer to that, and it, see, it makes sense to me. I, I would say that even if the uh, uh, <coughs> even if the uh, the decline in lot sales continued and they were able to double or even triple, that's that's you know 70 to 90 years. Yeah. But then at that point. Presumably, this is a uh, the attorneys described it as a bedroom community for Syracuse, and there are building. The, actually, a portion of this lot was sold off as a building lot. Right. So, um, the the thought is is if they don't purchase it, it will be developed. Um, but even if it's 90 years down the road, they will be done. Right. This is maybe more of a Tony question, but uh, I don't know if the board actually has resolved this, but perhaps it would make sense for the cemetery to acquire the land, but not necessarily acquire it right now as cemetery property. If they're not planning on immediately using it for interments, they could hold off on... No, they would want to keep it as cemetery property to get the tax yeah, exemption. But if but, they, um, would... <coughs> I'm just thinking down the road, if they don't need the space but could make... A big PM, a big uh, chunk of PM by selling it to a developer to build a house there. If they later can do, they don't need it. I wonder it's if still they a great deal. I wonder if they, wonder if they, why couldn't they do that by court order anyway? Because the land would be suitable for burial because we no, just not, not it as such. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, we do leases. They could acquire the land and lease oh, that's the true. stuff that they're not going to use. They could long term lease it for a house. Years. That's true. That makes sense. Oh. Okay. That makes me much more comfortable. Cool. Hi, anybody? Further discussion, comment, anything? Motion, man. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Um, Greenwood. Mausoleum Administration. Um, demonstrated need. Who's presenting this? Um, well, uh, Carrie is in training phase, so she can't okay. be here. I could do it, but the folks from Greenwood are, in fact, here. Oh, so are they? If you want to ask Great. them any questions, I, they're here welcome. to answer them. How are you? Um, I actually didn't have too many questions about this. It seems, uh, seems to me to be uh, pretty well laid out. Uh, well, I, there is one. The, the proposed repayment is over the course of 10 years. Right. All right. Uh, but your projected revenue... Uh, it's pretty significant right off the rip. You got right. 240, 400, 462, 500. Right. Um, it seems to me that the PM will probably be paid off more quickly we hope if, so. if, if that revenue projection holds. Yeah, we hope so. Right? So, my only suggestion on that is I have no problem with the 10 year payback if, in fact, that's warranted because sales don't, don't meet up to your expectations. And I think they will, by the way. I, I've seen the demonstrated need here. I got it. Uh, but if they do, I would like a payment plan which provides for, you know, replenishing the PM uh, 
more quickly, and that would be tied, I would suppose, I, we can leave it to the division, but that could be tied to a percentage of sales or, or whatever. It would be the greater of the the ten year pay the annual payout on the ten year payout or X percent of sales. Right. So that 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 was that was my only that was my only <coughs> issue with the to, to, to agree with that. Our expectation is that we pay off much quicker. Yeah. But we had some sense that we ought to put in a ten year time frame. Frankly I told them ten years because I want to have the division, nice standard. The division sort of like that's what we like to see at a minimum, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, but here I think I think the potential is for a much faster payment. We hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you do. Uh, why is it that loan from the endowment fund? Why? Yeah. It's because the cost of the project is seven hundred thousand. We have one hundred and fifty thousand. We feel comfortable borrowing from the current account, and our expectation was to borrow five fifty from the PM. We don't have any loans against that. And it seemed to us to be the most constructive way to have the project. We need to reserve so many in our current account for some other work that we're doing at the cemetery. And so even if we depleted that, which we would not want to do as a matter of principle, we still end up having to borrow from the people. Uh, but you're talking about the endowment fund now? What permanent maintenance? No. My question what you have an endowment fund of over a million, I think. I'm I'm not familiar with it. There are sheets in here from another application, yeah, that's Oakland. Not really, that is not you have to somehow they got stuck in there. Oh, I noticed that too. I think when Bridget scanned it, we just we were working on two at the same time. So that's there is Oakland. no such endowment fund, and, no. and because I'm such a close reader, I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I missed it too. No, we sent it to you this way. It's not your my apologies. Not I apologize for the inconvenience, but. Um, Confusion. Yeah. We had thought we would have another application from another cemetery in Westchester on at the same okay. time. And so, they got so to be clear, there, there is no endowment fund. We're talking about a federal operating fund and a permanent maintenance fund. So I get it. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, no we're sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Chris, do me a favor. Pass that concern along right, because right. when we present to Oakland in December, you're going to be asking them that. That's right. That's right. So, so the motion here. Do we have anything on this cemetery? So the motion here, should should one choose to make it, is that uh, to approve uh, conditioned upon uh, uh, the division working out with the, uh, the cemetery repayment plan uh, that would be key to uh, to revenue to provide for a faster payback. If in fact, that works out. In the 10 years. Does that sound like a motion? I like it. Second. Second. There you go. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I wish you luck with that. I think you're fine. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. New Forest is off the agenda. Uh, they, they, uh, all right. Well, they, they had, we had a, we've had a long conversation with several long yeah. conversations with them. They've added things to their application okay. to the point where I don't feel comfortable presenting it today. That's fine. So actually, the offer was, you know, they could just chat with us, but but I have no problem uh, putting that off later. Did they so. want to chat with us? Okay. Okay. Uh, it, might, it probably wouldn't have been productive. So uh, so they're off. Uh, in fact, they're not tabled. They're off, right? And, and so they, we'll put they them off. Right. Them. There's no application. So let's, let's take it off the uh, agenda. I said it was a fast. Uh, you want to tell us some more stories? Because this is a very short agenda. We've got lots of folks here. You know? No, but I'll say for the record that Greenwood Union really looks terrific. Yeah. It's, it's a very cool place. I've dri I must have. I live not too far from there. I must have driven by there a million times before I went in. They've, they've got all sorts of interesting stuff there. Yeah. No, they, including, it's not theirs, but they have a, a Civil War or African American burying ground. It belongs to the really? town of Rye, town of Rye. Yeah. but it's like tucked into their cemetery. That is great. And there's some other really cool stuff there. That is great. All right. Well, we've come to that portion of the meeting where our public agenda has reached its conclusion. Um, what we will do um, shortly to go into executive session. Uh, prior to that time, though, I customarily open up the meeting to the floor and uh, take any comments, any questions. Uh, feel free to ask or say. Anybody. All these. Rich. Just an update on our land purchase. Yes. Um, I spent three days at City Council last week. On Monday, the Landmarks Committee approved for nothing. On Wednesday, the Land Use Committee approved 18 to nothing. 
And on Thursday, the entire city council approved 47 to nothing. So on Friday, after review with Bob Malik's office, uh, we submitted the court order, which I think we served here on Friday or Monday. So yeah, I, I haven't seen it, but that's right. We are yeah. on our way. Right. Thank you. Good news. Cool. Anybody else? How, 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 how could I, I not, right? How could you not? Right. Dave Fleming from the New York State Association of Cemeteries. Um, just a quick thank you to Bob for his years of service. And while we didn't always agree, you always listened. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that very much. It's extremely helpful. So thank you for your service. Thanks, Dave. Um, also, on the small columbarium mausoleum issue, I think this has come up before, and uh, I went, one of our board members has discussed this previously at, at one of your meetings. I think we really do need to look at uh, the possibility of working together with uh, the regulated organizations to come up with a threshold here on, based on, I don't know if it's value of the development versus assets or something. Uh, because some of these smaller projects really, I don't think, I think are a waste of time for the division to have to be reviewing them, particularly if there are assets available. And we've discussed, uh, 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 two, bo two board meetings ago or so, we discussed something like that, and I think, thank you for reminding me, um, we certainly should discuss at least delegating to the division, you know, authority to approve projects under certain parameters. It's, it, it would not be too hard. Let, let's, let's work that on was, that. Mike and I talked about this, and uh, candidly, we don't think there's anything in terms of our approval process at the division level that ought to be removed. We do, however, think that what Dan is saying for a small project letting us have discretion to approve it without coming to the board makes sense. I'm going to give, for the record, I'm going to give publicly one example of why division approval is important. Even if you've got a relatively wealthy cemetery with a relatively small columbarium, uh, without our approval, what could happen, as in fact did happen, is that the columbarium could be installed within inches of existing interments. Now, that may end up being fine, but the reason we have these posting requirements is to give the people who've got graves in the area where it's going to be installed notice so they can say, hey, wait a minute. I don't want this thing next to me. Now, it's not all that big, but it is bigger than a headstone. And I at least found it jarring when I came to the site and saw this thing right on top of these old family plots. I mean, not on top. It's not literally on top. They didn't put it on top of any existing interments, but right next to it. And one of the things, look, having us pre-review them as opposed to having them just be able to go ahead when it, even if the financial burden is de minimis is to make sure that the existing owners are protected. Having said all of that, if division approval as opposed to board approval moves things along more quickly, yeah, that, that it will. That's a, we're all for that. Well, I don't think anyone's advocating less consumer notification or less <coughs> as far as what's necessary for the actual justification of the project. We talked about the streamlining of the process. Right. Certainly a project that costs very little uh, spending months and months to get approval probably is unnecessary and a, and a waste of the board's time. So and if it would save time that. for us to just do it, then... Right. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's work on that. We'll, we'll, we'll that. We'll the other issue is Ebola, which obviously we remain concerned about. I want to thank the board uh, for being involved in the process and pushing other agencies uh, to be responsive. And <coughs> we appreciate how uh, helpful you have been. There's a lot more to do, and it's unfortunate that there's still a lot more to do some weeks into this, uh, but I want to thank the, uh, the chairman in particular for his efforts and being a vocal advocate for the industry, and uh, Mr. Polshuk and Mr. Malala as well for being on calls of Bob, who's I'm sure in a, in a challenging position dealing with a, lot, with a lot of different aspects. So thank you. We have more to do, and we're standing by ready to help in any way that we can. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, thank you. That you, oh, you absolutely do. So, Dan, I just want to say, uh, you know, you've done a great job <coughs> going to the meetings. Chris, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, I know Paul will do a great job to the folks uh, in the division. You know, uh, it's been great working with you all. A uh, very committed group of individuals and, and to the industry reps. Um, you know, uh, it's a nice chemistry that exists between regulator and industry uh, with, with uh, cemetery uh, uh, 
uh, events and, and actions. And uh, uh, I just want to say uh, thanks, thank you all for your contribution over the years and continue to work <coughs> internally to the board and, and to the division staff. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Real pleasure. Yeah. All right. It's going to make me sad again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what I'll do is, um, oh, by the way, I guess we'll be doing the week third Thursday. Is that right? Let me just double check. I think so. The date uh, well, is. That's right. It's December 18th, and I have it on my calendar. And it's on my name. December 18th. Sound good for folks? Huh? Give us a in this now. That's right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Pending fault. Actually, pending fault. Hit. December 18th. Uh, what we do is we typically, it's, it's third Thursday of the month, unless there's a conflict or some reason not to, and then we get together and figure out what day works. Yeah. Actually, sometimes if you have a, a business card or something, something we'll, no. we'll edge to the email. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So it looks like the 18th, uh, having no further public business, uh, we'll take a five minute break. But prior to that, I will mention the goal to the executive. So, investigative.
Right. All right, having uh, uh, no motions uh, or other action coming out of the executive session. I move that we terminate the meeting. Terminate, I like that. Terminate the meeting. With extreme prejudice. Second. Second, yes. yes. <laughs> Second. Say aye. Aye, yes. Thanks, everybody. Aye. Bob, thank you. Bye. Thank you.